time. What a ride you take us on with this show. Thank you very much for that. Well, if it's a ride for you, you can only begin to imagine what a ride it is for us. Um, Emily and I love doing this play, and we're fortunate to have Colm with us and the rest of the company, but there is just something about the level of trust that I think we both feel for each other, and we just go where this play asks us to go every night, and it's an extraordinary uh, experience night after night. You know, I saw Jason Robars and Colleen Dewhurst. I saw Gabriel Byrne, and now your production. It's this whole new definitive production. There's so much more humor in this show, which I think is so wonderful. Everybody thinks this is this dark, dirgy piece, and you've taken us further and further inside the souls of these people that we've never seen before. Well, I think one of the things about great work is that no one set of actors owns it. You know, we're the current custodians of this play, and Howard Davies had a particular vision of it. But what makes great work great is that it can survive even bad interpretations. You know, l look at how long Shakespeare's been around and, and, and how many odd conceptions there have been over the years of productions that were just strange, and yet the plays still survive. And I think that I look forward to a day when there'll be another group of actors and another director who will take on this play with a different idea and a different interpretation uh, and different kinds of performances, because that to me is what's so exciting about seeing work that you know is that you just keep rediscovering it. And um, and I also think that O'Neill is a lot funnier than people necessarily think he is. You know, coming in they think, oh, it's going to... And you know, it's true, it is. It, it does get dark and it does get heavy and it does get very emotional, but I think what O'Neill does brilliantly in Act One is he really sets up Act Two with a lot of humor, and, he, and he's not so much doing character work in Act One as he is plotting. Because almost everything that is said in Act One happens in Act Two. Um, so I, I just feel blessed and lucky to get up every night and have a chance to share this story with an audience. And the students, the young kids that were there that were riveted, thank you for letting them come to the theater where they could afford now to go and see great work. Well, I, you know, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a real champion about this because I think that it is, uh, I think it's the responsibility of theater owners and producers to take the profits that they make in productions and put them back into developing the next generation of theater goers. If we don't do it, you know, you're charging 250 bucks for premium seats, and you know what? That's fine. That's the market. But take some of that money and invest in getting great seats for students. You know, our front row is student seats, and we do that for a reason. One, because kids can't believe they got seats so good. Two, you'd much rather have 30 enthusiastic, excited kids being there than people who might fall asleep because they got dragged to the theater. And I also think it affects the audience in the sense that people come in and think, oh, this is this old play from the 1940s. And then they see all these kids. And I know that if, if we get kids early enough, if we're able to encourage them to come to the theater, make it inviting, make it affordable, then maybe the next time somebody invites them to a play, they won't make a face. And they'll go, yeah, I had a really good time that last time I saw a play.